Hello everybody, it's your boy N here. I'm coming at you guys with another YouTube video. So in today's video, it is going to be the ultimate Aya farm guide. So this video will include configs, setup, methods, and I will show you some results. So without further ado guys, let's get right on into today's video. Real quick before we get into this, this method is not mine, I did not come up with it. All credits go for the Warframe Endo server and I will have a link to them in the description. So guys, there are 5 main frames used for Aya farming, so let me show you what all the frames are and get into the config. Frame number 1 is going to be Vault or Vault Prime. So first of all, you are going to need the Hemlint to subsume Eclipse for the 4th ability. Now this is going to be for a damage increase, so this is... Purely just so that vault can handle steel path if you decide to do it in there. However, there is no need to do steel path. You can do this in regular uh, planes of Eidolon and it will still give the same results. So guys, let's get on into the config for this vault. Now for the vault, you are going to want to go with a high duration and a high strength configuration. Now I've gone with loot detector to show where the caches are. So that is going to be the first mod. The next mod we are going to use is Augur Secrets again for strength. Umbral mods are going to stack, so we're using Intensify and Vitality for a 55% ability strength boost from Intensify. The next mod I'm going to be using is Narrow Minded. This is for some extra duration to keep that Eclipse and that speed active for a long time. The next mod I'm going to be using is Prime Continuity, again for duration, Blind Rage for some strength, Transient Fortitude for strength, and a Mars Hatred for some strength. Now, as you guys can see here, with Eclipse, I get a 522% boost in terms of damage. And the duration is almost a whole minute, which is very, very promising. Now, for the Arcanes, we are going to go with more Augmented, just for extra strength to make that Eclipse scale even higher. And we are also going to go with more Efficiency for extra duration to keep these abilities active longer. Now, the role of the Vault within the Aya Farm is to do everything. So, you are going to need a good weapon the and weapon you want to be running is the Shedu. So, let's get into the config for this Shedu. Now, for the Shedu, this is perfectly good enough for a config. So, Amalgam Serration for some damage and for sprint speed because we are trying to do this fast as possible with Vault. Vial Acceleration for fire rate. Heavy Caliber for some damage. Vital Sense for crit damage. Galvanized Chamber for some multi-shot. Critical Delay for crit chance. Bane of the Grenier because uh, in Plains of Eidolon it's only Grenier. And I wonder where my infective, infected clip has got to. Yeah, so for the element, we are going to make uh, Corrosive because Corrosive is very good and promising against Grenier. For the Arcane, Primary Merciless, extra damage and a faster reload. Shadow is infinite ammo, so this just means that the cooldown will be faster. So that is something to note. Now for the Excellent Slot, I would recommend putting in, uh, where is it? Terminal Velocity, but I do not have the capacity in here i would have to put one more former in order to get that and i personally just don't think it is going to make too too much of a difference but terminal velocity for the uh excellent slot if you guys want to do that now for the secondary weapon on vault you're gonna want something that is a single shot sort of weapon something like the latum nell is perfectly fine any sort of config on the nell or latum or any single shot weapon is perfectly good enough for the latum i've gone with a viral heat viral config as you can see i've got a riven mod which makes viral crit damage and minus to crit chance expel grenier lethal torrent primed heat charge galvanized shot deep freeze pistol pestilence and galvanized diffusion with steady hands for less recoil and secondary deadhead for more damage you don't need to make like a most uh, an insanely broken config for this but running something with the gal and with viral mods would be ideal for your secondary because you're going to use this just for taking out a single target now for the Prados, uh, the only reason I'm using this is for that evolution, sprint speed and slide. So that is the config on the vault. Let's get on to the config for the next Warframe. Now the next Warframe is going to be Loki. So guys, let's get right on into why Loki is here and what Loki does. Now Loki is only used for one thing and that is going to be the switch teleport ability. As you guys can see here, I've just maxed out the range because what we're going to want to do is run switch teleport for if the drone ever gets stuck. Now, we are also using power donation because everyone apart from the vault in the squad needs to run this in order to boost the Nidus and the Wisp. The next Warframe that is going to be used within this farm is going to be Nova. Now, Lo Nova and Loki are completely interchangeable and they are both 
here specifically for that third ability, just in case the now drone gets stuck. Now, that is single-handedly the reason that Nova and Loki are here, only if the drone ever gets stuck. If you are in a squad and you have to choose between one or the other, I would recommend Loki because the switch teleport is easier to pull off versus getting the drone to run through a wormhole, but that is just my personal opinion and you guys may prefer Nova. So guys, the next frame we are going to be using is Nidus Prime. So, Nidus or Nidus Prime is here for one reason and one reason only. And as you guys can see here, that is purely for power strength. Now with Nidus, we are going to be using power donation again. And this is the config we are going to be rocking on Nidus. Blind Rage for strength. Power Drift, strength. Energy Conversion for strength. Amaz Hatred for strength. August Secrets for strength. Transient for Fortitude for strength. And Umbrella Intensify for strength. Malt Vigor, again for strength, and Malt Efficiency for a little bit of extra duration, and Preparation just so we get a good amount of energy on spawn. Now I have subsumed uh, Protea's Dispensary onto Nidus, and given it enough duration to the point where if I cast it, I will guarantee an energy orb, so at least 10-12 seconds for the duration on this is good enough, hence the Malt Efficiency. And this is going to be used for the Parasitic Link. Now, as you can see here, I already get a 91% damage increase. Now, bear in mind, I will highly recommend using Nidus along with Madurai for the Void Sling. As you guys can see here, Sling Strength, 40% Strength for 20 seconds when doing a few Slings. So definitely do that with Nidus. And you have got definitely a lot more capability or you could replace dispensary with empower from the hemlinth that would also be ideal for more strength but this is the parasitic link build that we are going to be using for this farm now the nidus is in the farm to link onto wisp to give wisps more even more of a boost last but not least we have the wisp within this config again you could also push these all of these configs by using shards as you can see here i've got five crystal forge crimson archon shards for wisp and i'm also using empower on this wisp now for wisp it is simple just a max strength and high duration build now I would say you can go a bit 50-50 with the strength and with the duration. I would recommend having at least 250 duration and then as much strength as you can pump out. But ultimately the duration is priority because if you don't have good strength then the Nidus can cover for you. If you don't have good duration on Wisp then nothing can cover for you. So again we're going to be running power donation to boost uh, our teammates and boost ourselves further. Power drift for the... Um, Strength, Continuity for Duration, Narrow-Minded for Duration, and Constitution for Duration. Blind Rage and the Triple Umbrals are all for Strength, and for Arcanes we are going with Malt Vigor, and we are going with Malt Efficiency. Malt Vigor for Strength and Malt Efficiency for Duration, and we are also rocking Empower with this. Now the role of Wisp is to put Mots down where the Vault needs, and I will show you guys what you are going to do and how you are going to set up this farm i just wanted to quickly say i've thrown the natarok onto all of these frames apart from vault that is single-handedly just because the natarok has got infinite ammo and i like to shoot around shoot random things and to kill random enemies but this is completely optional your weapons as long as you are not vault are optional and you can use anything you want okay so we're all configed up now guys so let's head on over to cetus in order to begin setting this farm up so once you are in Cetus, you are just going to want to fast travel over to Konzu. And over here, you're going to want to start a bounty. Now, you're always going to want to start at the level 40 to 60 bounty without it being Steel Path, of course. And this is going to set the game up so that the bounty that you choose is going to be a tier 5 bounty. Now, this is important because tier 5 bounties have the highest drop chance of Aya. So what we are going to do is run on into... Plains of Eidolon and we are going to abandon the bounty. So to abandon the bounty literally all you have to do is just wait for the bounty to show up and we are going to open Nightwave up. This is a method and a little bit of a skip that I will get into later just to show you guys that it's significantly better. But like I said to abandon the bounty all you need to do is go on over to the bounty and from here, you're literally just going to want to run away, fly away, and wait for the abandoning objective to show up on your screen. 
Now that the abandoning objective is here, you just wait for it to finish and then I will get on into the next step and what this has done. Okay, so now that the bounty has just been abandoned, what this is going to have done is made it so that any bounty you start within the planes of Eidolon now will automatically be a tier 5 bounty. So guys, I've just put a screenshot on screen, so let me break this down for you nice and easy. So, the blue tent that is highlighted in the blue circle it has the exact same bounties as Konzu, so you're going to want to ignore that. Now, the three yellow tents have different bounties within them, and these tents are what you are going to want to go for. Now, we are looking for a very specific bounty that is called Capture the Grenier Agent or Find the Hidden Artifact. Now, if you do not get any of these bounties across any of these yellow tents, then you must reset uh, go back into the gate, start another tier 5 bounty with Konzu, and rinse and repeat this process until you get either capture the Grenier agent or you get find the hidden artifact. In this gameplay on screen, I am checking a tent and as you guys can see here, I managed to get find the hidden artifact. So, once you do find it, you are going to need to run it in order to test it. Now, there is five very specific missions we are looking for within this bounty. These missions are capture the target, find the caches, assassinate the target, rescue the target, and the rescue the drone mission. Now, it is debatable whether you want to run it with the find caches within the cave, or whether you want to run it without it and being it outside the cave. Now, if it's outside the cave, it just means that it is significantly more time efficient, meaning you are able to run this bounty more and more within the same period of time. Now, if it is in the cave, I personally say that is fine because it is not too hard. You do end up losing minutes, maybe tens and twenties of minutes throughout your run. But ultimately, I still think it is okay to run it with this in. So from the gameplay, again, you guys can see I am testing this bounty out. So, well, that is Warframe being buggy at its best. But as you guys can see, I am testing this bounty out. So in this gameplay right now, I am looking over it, doing the find the hidden artifact to see which stages I have. And like it says in the guide, if you do end up getting a different stage like a, a vault stage, for example, then you are going to need to abandon, reset, and look again in order to get it because it is definitely ideal to get these five specific stages for efficiency once you are done testing and whether you've got all five stages or not if you do then this is the bit where you invite all your friends in and get them to help you out and you know get the Aya farm going and start farming Aya as fast as you possibly can until the bounty runs out so guys this is the next important douse of setup so like I said, in the gameplay over there, I have gotten a tent with the bounty in up over here. So what I would do for that setup is what the other wisp in that lobby did do, is literally come over here, use the Empower, use the Malt Vigor and the Madurai Voicelink, and then cast a Malt over here for health, and then cast another Malt over here for haste. So guys, the second place that Wisp is going to need to place Morts is going to be right over here on the Shrine. Now with the Shrine, it is simple. Same stuff, except you just throw the Haste Mort down over here and the Health Mort down over here. Why this is here is for when the Vault does decide to run around the map, they're not going to keep going back up to the tent in order to pick up more Wisp buff. Now, the best place for the vault optimally is right here on the shrine. So whenever the vault does need it, they are going to come and pick up more boost from the shrine right over here. Now, the method that a lot of the other players in the lobby are going to use, everyone except for the vault, is going to be this. So Wisp should ideally place a, a mort over here, but it is not essential to do so. If you s run and slide into the water, you can see you get thrown into the water and you do get black screen and you do get a respawn now this does manage to slide past the afk timer and it does not count as you being afk now to actually do this properly is you hold your slide button for pc it's control for console i have no idea what it is anymore i think it may be l2 or left trigger so you use that and you slide into the water 
Now, once you've slided into the water, you need to press the button that brings up your chat box. So, once you've brought your chat box up, then you can literally put your controller down, go and feed your dog, take your dog for a walk, help your grandma with the shopping, and you will have absolutely zero problems, and you are guaranteed to still get rewards. Now, enemies will spawn around you over here. If they end up downing you or something like that and nobody is here to revive you, then yes, you die and you are going to lose out on rewards because you were dead when the players obtained them. So, it is ideal for Wish to place a health mod right over here just so that whenever you are spawning back in, you get an instant health buff until you basically get uh the magnetic proc from the water and you just keep coming back as you can see in the corner my health is constantly 2400 so i have a significantly less chance of dying here this is what every player in the lobby is going to do except from vault vault is going to be the only player running around getting the bounty stuff done and this is what every other player is going to be doing however the loki should still keep tabs on the game because it may come to a point where the drone gets stuck and the vault needs the Loki to switch teleport the drone out into safety so vault can continue running the bounty. So now that we have gone over all of the setup, let me show you as vault what this is going to be, what it is going to look like and some tips and tricks. So first of all, you're going to want to sit in your arc wing. Now if you press escape and jump into your night wave, you can skip the dialogue. That is important because it will save a significant amount of time whilst running. Now for the second tip is constantly use your speed, which is what you should be doing anyways, and constantly have your Eclipse active. As you can see from here, I'm running with the drone and taking care of the drone whilst it is running as Vault. This is basically the fastest thing that you can do, unless the Loki comes and joins the Vault and decides to switch teleport the drone halfway across and halfway across again. This is the best thing you can do as Vault. Now, these runs per bounty can vary depending on efficiency and time. Myself, personally, I'm getting around 4 minutes per bounty, meaning I could run this bounty approximately 12 times an hour, which is very effective. Let's say out of all of them, you could possibly get 2 ayah per run. That would still mean a promising amount of ayah, which is important. I ran this bounty myself for 1 hour and 28 minutes and within that time I got 29 ayah which is not too bad. If you were to do the maths on that roughly that would equate to about 1 ayah every 2 or 3 minutes. Some minutes you'd get multiple ayah, some minutes you'd get no ayah. So you know it's a bit of give and take, it does depend on RNG here. As you guys can see here I am running the find the hidden fact artifact bounty. And I'm just trying to be as efficient as possible. I do also have enemy highlighting turned on just so that I can see the enemies significantly easier. And just so that whenever enemies do pop up into my frame of view, I can see them easier and get ahead, kill them and all of that. Now as you guys can see here, I'm doing the night wave skip again. And I'm going on over to the shrine to get the mots that the wisp has placed over there. I jump out of arc wing, activate my 2 and my 4 and then go back into arc wing. Now this is where the Latum or the Nell comes into use because you can only hit one target and this is also why Wisp does not use the Shock Mort because that could possibly kill some enemies if the power strength is high enough. Given that Nidus will be linking to Wisp when Wisp plays the Morts then you know it gives a chance for the strength to be high enough to kill an enemy. Now as you can see here I have gotten Aya from this which is very very good and like I said bounties in the cave is uh, sorry the grenier caches in the cave is a bit of a 50 50 i personally don't mind it because the one key thing that i have noticed throughout running this several times is once you find the caches as you guys can see here there's already rewards on the floor over there is these caches tend to spawn in the same location and if they don't spawn in the same location they tend to spawn very close by to the other cache for example now in this gameplay, as you can see, I basically know where to go anyways because this is me running the bounty constantly for an hour. And, you know, at this point, i gotten a massive grasp on where it's going to spawn and I basically was ahead of it. And as you can see already, guys, within the last four minutes, I've gotten this entire bounty done. 
Now, if we were on the surface with the Grenier Caches, it would be significantly faster for me to go to the tent again and start the bounty up. Alternatively, you could have another player there, but they'd have to be present and basically play, jump around, shoot some enemies down, all that sort of stuff until the vault comes back or until you are done with the bounty and you could have a friend start the bounty for you. However, it's just best if Vault takes over and does everything themselves. So that is the optimal gameplay of this strategy. Now, last but not least, if you guys do learn this method, you are 100% able to charge players to join your lobby and farm the IO with you. Now, like I said, three players will be AFK and the Vault will be doing everything. So you are able to charge whatever price you want. On average, most players within the server that I referenced all of this from charge 2 plat per ayah. So if you end up getting 20 ayah, you give 40 plat. You get the gist. So it's something along them lines. Alternatively, you could give 30%. So if you were to get um, 28 relics, for example, you could give 8 relics to the host as an exchange in and then keep the rest of the ayah for yourself. But I think the plat method is a little bit easier. 2 plat per ayah is not a bad trade at all, in my opinion. So guys, as you can see, I'm just getting 54 plat from one of the players that was in my lobby when I was doing this farm. So you could definitely make a good amount of plat if you were to get good RNG and maybe get, let's say for argument's sake, 80 Aya in two and a half hours. Then you could get 240 platinum or you could get a lot of relics for free or something of the sort. Now, I definitely do recommend leaving the price at 2 plat per ayah just because it is fair for both players. And either way, the horse does end up making a significant amount of it. Now, this is almost the end of it. I've just got a few more things to go over and then we are done. So this is a screenshot from a friend who did also run this farm. And he sent me the screenshot. Thank you again so much for that, Deadeye. Appreciate it, brother. And as you guys can see here, he ended up getting 54 Aya in 2 hours. Now, as you guys can see here, you do get a lot of other promising rewards. You get a fair amount of Endor, some good Eidolon lenses, Revenant Neuroptics that you can exchange from credits, a few Ogre mods, and more importantly, you do get a few racks Wraith from this mission. Now, what you could do with the Furax Wraith is sell it on market for a little bit of extra plat, 10-15 plat extra, and the more you run this, the more sets you'll make, so that is even more plat that you could get without even trying. Now, this is one more screenshot from another friend, so thank you again so much for sending me this screenshot. And as you guys can see here, 58 Aya in 2 hours, which is again promising, a lot of Breath of Eidolons, a lot of Cetus Wisps, and more Furax parts. So guys, that has been this video on the ultimate Aya farm. Go out, push yourself and enjoy this because it is so fun to do an Aya farm. And not only do you get Aya, you can earn yourself a lot of potential platinum with everything else that you also get in this run. The endo for your mods, the few racks for plat and Kuva for rerolling ribbons. So you definitely do get a good hefty amount of rewards from this. So it is definitely rewarding enough to consider it a challenge and something I can definitely recommend. Anyway guys, that's been this video on this Ultima Aya Farm and I do hope you have enjoyed. If you did, please do smash that like button. If you guys wanna see more guides for anything else, please do leave it in the comment section below. My Discord server and Patreon are also in the description if you would like to check that out. But other than that, guys, I hope you've enjoyed. If you did, please smash that like button, and I will see you guys in the next